The first reaction from Ukraine to the long-awaited decision from the U.S. to use U.S.-supplied long-range missiles to strike deeper inside Russia was notably restrained. Today, much is being said in the media about us receiving permission for the relevant actions. But strikes are not made with words. Such things are not announced. The missiles will speak for themselves, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said in his nightly video address on Sunday. His statement came shortly after he posted a message of condolence on Telegram following a Russian attack on a nine-story building in the northern city of Sumy, 40 kilometers from the border with Russia. In his nightly address, Zelensky also noted that on Sunday, Russia conducted one of the largest and most dangerous missile and drone strikes targeting Ukraine's energy infrastructure. And this is the answer to everyone who tried to achieve something with Putin through talks, phone calls, hugs, and appeasement, he said. America is Ukraine's most valuable ally in the war, providing more than $56.2 billion in security assistance since Russian forces invaded in February 2022. The decision allowing Kiev to use the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, for attacks farther inside Russia comes as President Vladimir Putin positions North Korean troops along Ukraine's northern border to try to reclaim hundreds of miles of territory seized by Ukrainian forces. Biden's move also follows the presidential election victory of Donald Trump, who has said he would bring about a swift end to the war and raised uncertainty about whether his administration would continue the United States' vital military support for Ukraine. News of Biden's decision followed meetings over the last two days with the leaders of South Korea, Japan and China where North Korean troops were central to the talks, which took place on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Peru. Biden did not mention the decision during a speech at a stop to the Amazon rainforest in Brazil on his way to the Group of 20 summit. As many as 12,000 North Korean troops have been sent to Russia, according to U.S., South Korean and Ukrainian assessments. U.S. and South Korean intelligence officials say North Korea also has provided Russia with significant amounts of munitions to replenish its dwindling weapons stockpiles. На щастя, вдалося збити. Мішенню для Росії була саме енергетика, критична інфраструктура. І це відповідь усім, хто хотів чогось досягти з Путіним розмовами, телефонними дзвінками, обіймами, умиротворенням. Росія вже майже тисячу днів робить одне те й саме. І від цього треба захищатись, треба бути сильними, час інвестувати Треба не у те, щоб поговорити з кимось в Москві, а щоб дійсно змусити Росію до закінчення війни. План посилення України – це план перемоги, який я представив партнерам. Одним з головних пунктів є далекобійність для нашої армії. Сьогодні багато в медіа говорять про те, що ми отримали дозвіл на відповідні дії. Але удари завдають не словами. Такі речі не анонсують. Ракети самі за себе скажуть. Обов'язково. Слава Україні! China's leader Xi Jinping met for the last time with U.S. President Joe Biden but was already looking ahead to President-elect Donald Trump and his America First policies, saying Beijing is ready to work with a new administration. The two leaders gathered Saturday on the sidelines of the annual Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Biden was expected to urge Xi to dissuade North Korea from further deepening its support for Russia's war on Ukraine. Without mentioning Trump's name, Xi appeared to signal his concern that the incoming president's protectionist rhetoric on the campaign trail could send the U.S.-China relationship into another valley. China is ready to work with a new U.S. administration to maintain communication, expand cooperation and manage differences so as to strive for a steady transition of the China-U.S. relationship for the benefit of the two peoples, she said through an interpreter. In a major flourishing SciTech revolution, neither decoupling nor supply chain disruption is a solution, she said. Only mutual, 
beneficial cooperation can lead to common development. Small yard, high fence is not what a major country should pursue. There's much uncertainty about what lies ahead in the US-China relationship under Trump, who campaigned promising to levy 60% tariffs on Chinese imports. Biden, who is winding down more than 50 years of public service, talked in broader brushstrokes about where the relationship between the two countries has gone. For a decade, you and I have spent many hours together, both here and in China and in between. And, uh, you know, we, I think we spent uh, a long time <laughs> dealing with these issues. Can you... Protect your earpiece. We have simultaneous interpreting. I learned to speak Chinese. <laughs> Wish I did. Okay, let me begin first. It's a great pleasure. We haven't always agreed, but our conversations have always been candid and always been frank. We have never kidded one another. We've been level with one another. I think that's vital. These conversations prevent miscalculations and they ensure the competition between our two countries will not veer into conflict, be competition, not conflict. That's our responsibility to our people, and as you indicated, to the people around the world. We are the most important alliance or most important re relationship in the entire world. And how we get along together is going to impact the rest of the world. Most important bilateral relationship.